It's been the most significant decade in the history of Gadge. Whoa! The technology of the last ten years has changed our lives completely. And as the noughties come to an end, the Gadget Show celebrates the most important gadgets of the most important gadget decade ever. You have decided. For two months, you voted for your favourite tech. Yes! And right here, right now, we will reveal... The phone of the decade. The entertainment gadget of the decade. The computer gadget of the decade. The music gadget of the decade. The photographic gadget of the decade. And then the biggie. The gadge to rule all gadge. The one true gadge. The uber gadge. Yes, what did you vote as the Gadget Show's Gadget of the Decade? Hello and welcome to a very special and rather splendid Gadget Show. Yes, it's our Gadget of the Decade Awards. Can you get the email about the, the evening wear? <laughs> no. We didn't get that one. <laughs> what? Uh, what an incredible ten years it's been. I mean, it started with those fireworks that didn't go off on the Thames. Uh, and then, of course, the, the double-A side from Westlife, yeah? Uh, Seasons in the Sun and I Have a Dream. That was number yeah, one. Yeah, it started on a low. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily, it got a lot better. In terms of tech, it's been an incredible ten years. It certainly has. OK, we might be in the middle of a recession and Chaz and Dave have split up. But think about the gadgets and how much they've changed our lives. I mean, there's been uh, digital cameras. MP3s. Super fast connectivity. Dirty great TVs. Yeah, and all in the last ten years. This is the future that we were dreaming about, where there's a gadget for pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. And the question that we're going to answer on tonight's show is which ones stood out and which will be lauded and remembered in the next decade. Yeah. Yep, and we're going to start off with the best phone of the decade. Think about it. During the last ten years, mobile phone communications, normal phone communications, anything to do with telecommunications, has really improved beyond our wildest dreams. The mobile phone. Nothing since the creation of the motor car has given us more personal freedom. Suddenly having one of these meant that we could conduct our business and social lives anywhere we wanted. I could not live without my phone. I'm a massive texter. I love to text. If you took my phone off me for a day, I would cry. Obviously, these phones aren't an invention of the last 10 years, but it's during the last decade that they truly come of age. And back in 2000, this was my personal favourite, the Nokia 3310. And it seemed a few other people thought the same, as it racked up sales of 126 million units. There must be like landfill sites that's full of those old little no Nokias. You can make calls on it, text, even download simple games. And it just did its job, and for that reason, it was a hit. But let's face it, it wasn't very pretty, was it? But in 2004, a phone came along that changed all of that. The Motorola V3 Razor. Suddenly, phones weren't just functional, they were fashionable as well. I mean, look at it. Super slim, absolutely gorgeous, made of metal and not plastic, and a chemically etched keyboard. Oh. But I go for function over form, which is why I like the Nokia 5140. The 5140 was a phone for outdoorsy types, packed with features like a thermometer, a flashlight, even a decibel meter. And it was tough surviving our attempts to test it to destruction. Yeah, but Jason, the Razor went on to be the biggest selling clamshell phone ever because it was desirable. Whereas that thing, well, allow me to demonstrate. <laughs> Which one would you choose? This one. And same for you, this one. This one. Thank you very much. Excuse me, which one would you choose? No, that's the wrong answer. That one. Right, thank you very much. Same with you. Marvellous, thank you. <laughs> yes, yeah, Susan, I think you're missing the point. Can I just borrow those? Thank you. Oh, oh dear. Oh, I'm <gasps> so oh, what a shame. I'm so sorry. Look, there you go. There you go, my darling. Now, which one's more desirable? You've broken it. All right, yep. In 2005, the much faster 3G phones started to appear, which could surf the internet with ease and make video calls. Suddenly, the phone stopped being just a phone and began to be a whole lot more. It's my kind of portal to the rest of the world. So I use my phone more, not for phoning. This takes the dog for a walk. It does everything. And then there was the whole new world of emailing on our mobiles. And in this discipline, one manufacturer was king, BlackBerry. Their push email facility meant that you were immediately notified of messages as they came into your office or home computer. 
You've got to admit, for a mobile phone, that was a massive step forward. 24-7 communication. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's, I, just, I don't know what it is. There's just an image thing with the Blackberry that I don't get on with it. It's just too snooty. I mean... Hello, Eric. It's Daddy. Hello, darling. I'm on the year 192, and then we can reconvene with the kids for a bit of supper. All right, darling? All right, ciao, Bella. Bye-bye. Taxi. Oh, I've got a Blackberry, and I'm from Wolverhampton, and I'm not remotely snooty. Help me! I have got... A Blackberry at the moment. My favourite phone in the past ten years is my current one, I think, at the moment, because it's the new Blackberry. You get Blackberries now in, you know, the whole portable office. I don't go there. That's not for me. Blackberry for me. <laughs> all right, maybe there are exceptions, all right, but this decade hasn't just been about the phones themselves. Bluetooth earpieces. At one point, were all the rage. Yeah. This is a particularly good example. The Jabra BT250. If I had to wear that, I'd rather switch my phone off. I mean, look at it. Look at that. And that's that's on a big ear. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you have a go at Blackberry <laughs> users, Blackberry <laughs> users, and then you champion something like that. But by 2006, our phones weren't just boring old phones anymore. They were now brilliant smartphones, like the amazing Nokia N95, with its 5 megapixel camera, full web browser, and GPS. I want to talk about another phone now, so no, right. no, 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 about, no, 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 the phone I want to talk about uh, is so popular that today it's sold over 21 million units worldwide. Oh, yeah, but my phone, there were literally people queuing outside before launch and people had to pay £269 for the privilege. My phone's got a camera and um, multimedia functionality and I think the best touchscreen experience on any phone. OK, all right, well, mine has got all of those things plus full email, web browser and Wi-Fi connectivity. Yeah, but can yours boast apps? Oh, yeah. Two billion have been downloaded on mine. Serious? Yes, serious. I, I'm, I'm talking, talking... I'm talking about, about the, the iPhone. iPhone. That's amazing. So, an amazing decade of innovation and here to reveal your choice of phone of the decade is Mr John Bentley. Oh, thank good. you, thank you. Now, the votes have all been counted and verified and the three phones with the most votes are in no particular order. The ubiquitous Nokia 3310, mm -hmm. the Apple iPhone yeah. and the Nokia N95. Oh, mm, but which one's the winner? Aha! A tense Ooh! It's an absolute landslide. The winning phone has pretty much twice as many votes as all the other phones combined. And the gadget show's phone of the decade is... the Apple iPhone. Yeah! It was always going to be the iPhone, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, wholeheartedly agree with the choice there, it's, though. It's had a huge effect on the design of so many other phones. Yeah, it has. Revolutionary. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we will send the award to Apple, and you can bet your bottom dollar that this award will be sitting on Steve Jobs' mantelpiece. <laughs> Don't you agree? Absolutely. All right, time for a short break now while we get our breath back before we give away more gadget gongs. Still to come, the Gadget Show Awards for music, computers, photography and entertainment. And the big one. The Gadget Show's Gadget of the Decade is... Place your bets now! Welcome back to our Gadget of the Decade awards show. Shrug a post, Suze. Oh, beautiful! You might have guessed. Uh, next up, it's the photography gadget of the decade. And there was only one man who was up to the job of seeing how much the world of photography and cameras has changed in the last ten years. Oh, that'll be me, then. Yeah, we're talking about you, yeah. John. Yeah, Ooh, over here, John. Give us some serious face. Let's nice, have it. Nice Mr. work. Bentley, over here, Mr Bentley. Remember these film cameras? How very quaintly 20th century. Now, let's just remind ourselves of how we all used to take photos up until about ten years ago. Go to a shop and buy some film. Then load the film carefully into your camera. Take no more than 36 photos and make every single one of them count. Because even if they're rubbish, you'll still end up paying for them. Smile! Now carefully remove the film from the camera. Take the film back to the shop to get it developed. And then wait for anything up to... two weeks before going back to the shop to collect your prints. When you do get them back, the pictures just aren't like you remember them. The exposure's a bit wrong, the colours are different, and what's that creeping in on the edge of frame? Ugh. Now let's remind ourselves of how we all take photos now. Step one, take a photo. 
and you can see it on the screen immediately. The digital revolution in photography with its ones and zeros made it easy to instantly assess the quality of your snaps. The next steps are up to you. You can delete the bad ones. Don't touch that! You can upload the good ones and store them on your home computer. You can share them on the internet. Hello. Hello. You can print them off and even get them printed on mugs or mouse mats. I was dreadful at taking photographs before they came along. I was always chopping people's heads off. And now, I think it's really given me a bit of a, a passion for photography. It's turned us all into camera bores. Look at these great photos I've got on my holiday. Took these all. Look at the pixel quality on that. It's amazing how quickly things have changed. Launched in 1999, Nikon's D1 was the first digital camera to be widely adopted by professional snappers, even though it only had 2.7 megapixels and cost over three and a half grand. But we had to wait another four years for the first affordable digital SLR, Canon's EOS 300D. It's taking back about 600 pounds. Revolutionary. The success of digital compacts has been even more impressive. Canon alone has sold over 100 million digital cameras, led by its ever-popular Ixus range. But for me, this is the digital compact camera of the decade, Fuji's F31 FD, launched in 2006. It's got a superb sensor, it has great image quality, and it's only just being surpassed by the digital compact cameras of today. In just 10 years, film has gone from being the main way we capture still images to a very niche product. Even Kodak, a company synonymous with film, gave up producing film cameras several years ago because the market just wasn't there anymore. Digital is winning on every front. And here on The Gadget Show, we proved that a 12 megapixel digital image is more than a match for film, even when blown up to ridiculous proportions. And just to prove how good even relatively low-resolution digital images are, I went along to my local cinema to display a 2.2 meg picture of Birmingham on a state-of-the-art digital projector. Will the image survive being blown up to cover a 50-foot screen? Well, let's find out. Wow, on a 50-foot screen! And well, it looks pretty good, actually. I can't see any trace of pixelization. I can see lots of details. The colours are fantastic. And that's bigger than you could ever conceivably want your picture. The internet has also played its part because digital photography and the net were made for each other. Social networking sites are crammed full of digital pictures. Facebook alone gets two billion new photos every month. For photo connoisseurs, there's Flickr. Launched in 2004, it's considered to be the best online photo management and sharing application in the world. I think the image that you end up with, you then have a myriad of different ways of using it. Whether you want to go onto one of the internet sites and make it into a calendar, you can create books. Your own books, I mean, goodness me. And the home computer has made manipulating photos so easy. And one of the programmes, Photoshop, has been so successful, it's actually entered the language. We no longer talk about manipulating our photos, we talk about photoshopping them. I think digital cameras do take better pictures, definitely. And I think the best thing about it is that you can Photoshop them to your heart's content. And I'm willing to bet there are virtually no professional photographs published today that haven't been digitally tweaked in some way. The digital revolution has turned us all into David Bailey's and Annie Leibovitz's. Taking photographs has become such a part of our lives that few of us now leave home without a camera. Got one on me now. Yeah, got home with me. Yeah, got a camera, camera yeah. Phone, really. yeah, got it on me all times. Got it on me now. All the times. camera in my pocket and my camera phone in my pocket. Oh, well, yeah. I carry a camera phone with me all the time. I, I always carry my camera phone. Today, people carry cameras practically everywhere. At your local salsa club. At an American football match. Three, two, one, go! And even at a Supercross event. Go! Well, there you go. I think you'll agree. Now we're all snappers. Well, I think that proves the point. Good. I can't believe how long it used to take just to get your prints back. I know, it's outrageous. No, no, it's great. <laughs> oh, but the big question is now, what have you chosen as the photography gadget of the decade? Here's John. 
Aha, well, the tense music that's playing at the moment is highly appropriate hey, because this was the most closely contested of all the categories, with only just over a hundred votes separating the top six gadgets. Blimey. And the top three, again, in no particular order, are Adobe Photoshop Elements, mm -hmm. photo editing software, the brilliant Flip Ultra video camera, and Windows Movie Maker video editing software. Hmm, but what's the winner? Well, here is the envelope, and the winner is... Ah, Adobe Photoshop oh, good Elements. Well done, Adobe Photoshop. I think it gives you close to professional standards of photo manipulation in what's actually a very affordable package. Absolutely. It does, Quite yeah. Right, mm. so. I shall be ensuring that this award gets to Adobe HQ. Which, which is where, John? San Jose in California. Ah, but John, do you know the way to San Jose? <laughs> <laughs> very droll, Otis. You line them up, I knock them down. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> If you disagree with any of the winners in tonight's award show, fear not. You can vent your spleen on our website at 5.tv slash gadget show, where you can let us know exactly what you think should have won. And if you've left your Christmas shopping a little bit late and need some last minute inspiration, then you should check out our special Christmas web TV show in which Dion and John count down their top 50 gadgets for Christmas. Right, time for another short break now, but after that. We reveal the computer gadget and music gadget of the decade as voted by you. Whoa! So, what do you think they are? Well, stick around for just a couple of minutes and you'll find out. <laughs> Welcome back to our special Gadget Show, Gadget of the Decade show. Yeah, you might have just joined us, in, and in which case you'll be thinking, why is John dressed in a tux when we're all just chillaxed in our streetwear? Uh, it's because he's auditioning for the new Bond film. Hello? OK, I'm lying. But <laughs> actually, to add a little bit of panache to today's awards proceedings. That's right, and in the next few minutes, he'll be announcing the winner of our third award, which is for Best Computer Gadget of the Decade. Yeah, but first, our very own computer supremo, Jason Bradbury, with a reminder of the amazing advancements that we've seen in computers over the last decade. On the morning of January the 1st, 2000, while still nursing the mother of all hangovers, we were all worrying about an even bigger headache. Had our computers been wiped by the Y2K, the Millennium Bug? <laughs> No, I'm just joking. You see, actually, everything was fine. Travelling forward in time, the first major computer milestone of the decade came in 2001. This was when the PC versus Mac war got serious. This was the year of the operating system. On March the 24th, Apple launched OS X. Seven months and a day later, Microsoft retaliated with Windows XP. Ever since, people have argued whether Macs or PC were best and the battle rages on to this day. 2001 also saw the beginnings of the broadband revolution. However, internet speeds were still cripplingly slow, only 512k per second in most homes. Things were changing, though, and by 2002, some people were getting as much as 2 meg per second. But it was over the next five years that computing really moved on. Take up for the new, quicker broadband increased by 600%. And by winter of 2006, 13.1 million people have been connected to the new broadband service. It's probably no coincidence that about the same time, a new genre of information sharing websites had firmly implanted themselves in the nation's psyche. First, MySpace in 2003, then Facebook in 2004. Google Earth followed in 2005, and in the same year, how we share video changed forever when YouTube was launched. Within three years, YouTube was receiving one billion video views per day. PCs and laptops also changed monumentally over the decade. Processing speeds were up to 35 times faster, and hard disk storage around 60 times greater. And by 2007, they got a whole lot smaller with the launch of the netbook. Pioneered by the Asus EPC, they were small, lightweight and low-cost. Netbooks were designed to be taken anywhere and everywhere. 
But the big news since the millennium has been wireless internet. First, our lives were changed forever by Wi-Fi. Then came 3G internet through the mobile phone networks, which, by 2007, was quick enough for us to surf all over the land. By 2009, these laptops look clunky and chunky. <sighs> what it's about now is devices like these. Blackberries, iPhones, G2s, smartphones, pocket-sized connected computers. The popularity of these things has surged in recent years. In fact, in the UK alone, 10 million of us use these devices to connect to the internet. Whoa! <laughs> Computing at the end of the decade has become an intrinsic part of everyday life. The technology now exists to once and for all unchain us from our desks. I have been privileged to have been part of the growth of computers over the last 10 years. And I tell you something, I can't wait to see what's going to happen in the next 10. All right, that's it. I'm going to do that tingly thing with my particles that makes me pop up in different parts of the world. Come on, take me home, baby. Whoa! With so much innovation over the last 10 years, there's a huge number of computing gadgets that have literally changed our lives. But what did you choose to be the Gadget Show's computer gadget of the decade? Well, this was another hotly contested category. And the top three, again, in no particular order, are Facebook, the USB flash drive, and YouTube. Ah. Who do you think's going to win, team? The flash drive. It's yeah. small, yeah, it's small, but it's so mighty these days. Yeah, it's obviously so. really mm. handy, but these two are so popular, aren't they? Facebook and YouTube. I mean, oh. YouTube's massive. For me, for me, the phenomenon of the last of the last five years, let alone the last ten years, is, is, is got to be YouTube. Mm, well, so. let's see who's right. I have the envelope, and <gasps> John, I want to change mine. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> the gadget shows computer gadget this of the me. decade <laughs> is YouTube. Yay! <laughs> to YouTube, well done. Yeah, round of applause. Yeah, absolutely, we absolutely agree. I think we agree with your decision. Uh, John, where's that one going? Well, YouTube used to have their headquarters above a pizzeria in San Mateo, California, but now they've got a bit bigger. They've moved down the road to San Bruno. Is there anything that man doesn't know? <laughs> he doesn't know the way to San Jose. <laughs> 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 All right, now, can we have a really dramatic, really big, really techie fanfare? Because we're about to do something absolutely incredible. Oh, absolutely. Just, to, just to really sort of bring the moment up, yeah? Yep, that's what we want. Not a problem. Big fanfare. Big... Leave it to me. <laughs> Is that your gadget of the decade? Um, no, the previous version had better, better buttons on it. OK, it's time. <laughs> well, you now, asked. For this week's competition, and it is an absolutely awesome prize friend, the biggest, honestly, that we have ever given away. So you're going to want to listen very, very carefully. She's not wrong because this week we are giving away 180 gadgets. Wow. Woo! Yes, you heard the man correctly. And if you don't believe us, here's John. Yes, I can confirm that my colleagues are indeed being entirely truthful and that should you be fortunate enough to win this competition, you will indeed receive 180 gadgets delivered to your home. Yes! So here comes the list. You know you want it. You could win a 50-inch plasma TV, a 40-inch LCD TV, a 32-inch LCD TV, a Blu-ray player and 30 Blu-ray movies. A Panasonic compact digital camera, a Nikon D90 digital SLR camera, a high-end gaming PC, a MacBook laptop and a Canon PicSmart printer. A TomTom Tom Go Live sat-nav, a BMW Zeppelin mini iPod dock, a Wii, a Wii Fit and a DSi. An Xbox 360, a PS3, a PSP Go, a Paramount gaming chair and games for all the consoles. A year's subscription to Xbox Live, our top five home security gadgets, our top five USB gadgets, our top five sports watches and our top five party console games. Our top five Christmas stocking fillers, our top five RC flying toys, our top five scooters, our top five toys and our top five digital photo frames. Our top five kites, our top five lights, an Altec Lansing Inmotion Max iPod dock, an iPhone and a 5.1 surround sound speaker system. An iPod touch, an Arcos 5, a Burton Ordex iPod jacket, a Panasonic high def camcorder and a Sanyo Exacti waterproof camcorder. A flip video ultra HD, a Rovio mobile webcam, a bulletproof USB memory stick, an Oral-B electric toothbrush and a Slingbox Pro. A Surefire E1 backup torch, a Ritchie Boardman bike, and a Brompton folding bike, a Roberts Ecologic 2 dab radio, and a pair of Solomon Cosmic walking boots. A Gorilla Pod, a Berghaus Bioflex rucksack, a Turbo Chef food processor, a Power 8 workshop, and a Philips juicer. A Yogi Gatekeeper Pico, a Griffin Bluetooth headset, a Water Blaster XLR water cannon, and a Roby Pro super disc. And an iJoy horse riding exercise machine. A Cobb Barbecue, an Aladdin Challenger flask, a pair of Skull Candy TI headphones, 
a Pavel Roadster Racing skateboard and an Apple TV. A Breville toaster, a copy of Windows 7, a copy of FX Home Special Effects software, a MindLab Explorer metal detector and a Dyson Ball vacuum cleaner. A D-Link Wi-Fi router, a GoPed Noped, an Amazon Kindle e-reader and a Samsung NC10 netbook. All that plus four tickets to Gadget Show live at the NEC in Birmingham next Easter and a limo to take you all the way from your front door to the show and back again. It's a prize fund worth an incredible 25 and a half grand. And to be in with a chance of winning the lot, you'll need to know the answer to this question. How many years make up a decade? Is it A, 10, B, 20 or C, 30? To enter, call 0904 1616 5 or text A, B or C to 6355 or send your answer, name and contact telephone number on the back of a postcard or sealed envelope to Gadget Show 21 PO Box 46556 London N10 WW. Calls cost £1.50 from a BT landline. Calls from other networks may vary and from mobiles will cost considerably more. Text cost £1.50 plus one message at standard network rate. For rules, go to 5.tv slash win. Lines close at midday on Tuesday the 29th of December and two days later for postal entries. Of course, we'll show you the question again at the end of the show. Good luck. OK, back to the reason that we're all here today. Yeah, the gadget show, Gadget of the Decade, chosen by you. And the next award is for Music Gadget of the Decade. And for the challenging task of somehow trying to sum up 3,652 days of music in which countless billions of songs were bought, sold, copied, pirated and eventually listened to, we chose Otis! Wow. Yeah, no, I mean, I hope it's good, you know. Yeah. I'm just saying, just with the whole build-up, I think it ought to be good. Right. I want to talk to you about music. In the beginning, man created the beat. <laughs> and the beat was good. As music developed, people from all around would gather to hear wandering minstrels play their funky music. And for hundreds and hundreds of years, live was the only way to listen to music. However, over the last 100 years or so, technology gathered pace. And a number of ways to listen to music grew. And grew. But everything that went before is nothing compared to the last 10 years. The last decade has seen the way we listen to music change beyond recognition. Back in 2000, people went to things called shops and exchanged cash for music by recording artists such as All Saints, Craig David and Steps. But no more. That's because some clever Germans developed a way to compress music and turn the world on its head with a fancy new file format. Then I got my first MP3 player, which was an Arcos. It was quite big and bulky and limited on, on the display and the amount of music it held, but it was, a, it was a step forward. I've still got my first MP3 player. I still carry it around, my massive bipod. That's a bit like a brick, actually. It is actually called my first MP3 player. It's Fisher Price. <laughs> It was actually Apple that tuned us all into MP3 players when they launched the incredibly successful iPod in 2001. I remember at the time a friend of mine putting me a load of like something like he put 50 CDs on there, and I would just sort of look, how, how do you get them in and everything else? But uh, you just take it for granted nowadays. There's just nothing better than having all of your favourite songs on tap any time of day. So I don't know what I did before my iPod came along. And I found my first iPod the other day, and my good, it's not aged well. It looks like something from the 1940s. Uh, now it's clunky and weird. Um, it didn't even have that the, the proper touch wheel thing. It was just buttons everywhere and a green screen. Um, but you know, it changed my life. It meant that I could have music on the go. Since then, there have been six different classics and loads of minis, nanos, shuffles, and touches. And by 2009, 220 million iPods had been sold worldwide. What the iPod and other MP3 players have done is enable a near constant soundtrack to everyday life with your entire music collection available at all times. And the rise of music on the go has meant a rise in demand for an ever varying range of earphones and headphones. In ear, over the ear, bigger bass, more treble, control on the wires, and wireless. The last 10 years have been headphone crazy. Yeah, I'll tell you a funny thing about having headphones. When I get on the plane, I don't want to talk to anybody, even if I haven't got, you know, <laughs> an iPod or anything else. I just put my headphones on and put the string in my pocket or in my bag and people think I'm playing so that I can go to sleep and not having, you know, especially if you're sitting next to someone you don't want to talk to. So it comes in handy for that. <laughs> 
but the most important headphones of the last decade are the Bose Quiet Comfort series. These Microphones in the ear cups monitor background noise and play out a signal. But it's the internet that has revolutionized how we listen to music this decade. In 2005, downloads from sites like iTunes and Napster outsold physical tracks for the first time. And in 2009, 98% of singles were bought online. Plus, new websites like MySpace have given an audience to over 8 million new musicians. But the internet revolution didn't stop there. And in 2009, the way we listen to music changed again, before our very ears. Streaming music instead of downloading had become widespread, and websites like Spotify were instantly bringing music to the people for free. I do like the sort of like website like Spotify. I enjoy sort of like, you know, being able to access it anywhere in the country on my laptop in a hotel room and listen to my favourite tracks. I think it's a brilliant service and it's legal. I'm not illegally downloading music. I'm allowed to do it. You can get stuff from years and years ago when I was a kid. Uh, Happy Radio by Edwin Starr. You can't get Happy Radio. Do, do, do you remember Happy Radio? Happy Radio. You're too young, aren't you? Um, all that sort of stuff. And also, do, do, do the funky given. See, you can't get that anywhere nowadays. Not unless you're on medication. So there you have it. You can see how monumental this decade has been for music technology. From headphones to iPods to music streaming, we put our 10 favorite music gadgets of the decade to the public vote. And all over the land, you've been voting in your thousands. But what has been the best music gadget of the decade? Well, tech heads of the world you, 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 you have decided. It's Johnny. <laughs> Thank you. And I've already opened the envelope here because I'm sure the result isn't going to be a shock to anybody. In fact, I think it qualifies as the most predictable result this evening. Yes, the winner of the Gadget Show's Music Gadget of the Decade is... And I'm going to leave a pause for dramatic effect here, even though we know it's the iPod. <laughs> the iPod! <laughs> <laughs> Launched in 2001, it's now sold over 220 million in its various forms. It's introduced concepts like the MP3 player and music downloading to the Western world, and it's always completely dominated its market. And we can save money on postage and packaging by sending both this and the award for the iPhone to Mr. Steve Jobs. See? Look after the pennies, eh, viewers? Oh, quite. Yes, yeah, good. <laughs> Right, we're having a short break now, but after that, the climax of the decade. Yes, it is most definitely the biggie. In just a few minutes, we'll reveal what you, the Gadget Show viewers, have voted as the gadget of the decade. Do not go anywhere. Welcome back to our Gadget of the Decade special. Yes, we've already given away four awards. And in case you popped out to the loo before the show started and unexpectedly were detained by a dire plumbing emergency, here's Jason and Otis with a brief recap. <laughs> OK, so the first award was for best phone, and that went to the iPhone. Yeah, next up, it was the best photography gadget of the decade, and that was won by Adobe Photoshop Elements. Our third award was for best computer gadget of the last ten years, and you voted YouTube as your winner. Next up, it was all about the music, and the best music gadget of the decade, according to you, and I've got to say, I agree with you, was the iPod. So that means there's just one category to go before we get to the big one, what you've chosen as the Gadget Show's Gadget of the Decade. And that's... <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> really? Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, the way to amuse yourself at home over the last decade have changed enormously. Entertainment, what an evocative word. A word that can be used to describe a whole range of incredibly enjoyable experiences. Woo! Like taking a trip to the theatre. Or watching a film. Shh. Or going to your favourite concert. But over the course of the decade, radical technological advances have revolutionised the ways in which we are entertained. And not least when it comes to our tellies. 
We started the decade watching CRT televisions like this. But they were limited to screen sizes of up to 40 inches. That's because of the size and the weight of the cathode ray tube inside here. TVs used to be used to have the hour of literally it would take up the whole corner of your living room to fit a half decent TV in there. But it wasn't long before we'd had enough of sharing our living room with something so bulky and so ugly. Luckily, some clever bods were busy developing much thinner flat-screen display technologies like plasma and LCD, which were brighter, crisper and, crucially, in high definition. And we went mad for HD, so much so that now more than half of us own a high-definition television. And it's predicted that by 2013, a staggering 85% of us will own one. And while experts continue to argue which gives the best viewing experience, plasma or LCD, in 2007, the LCD, with its wider range of available sizes, became the most popular type of television, capturing an incredible 47% of the global market. But now, as we end the decade, a newer, even thinner TV type is on sale. First commercially available OLED TV. Just look at the colour and the clarity on that. And now, imagine watching movies on a massive version of this in the next decade. Not long after the dawn of the decade, DVD sales were outstripping those of VHS. And with the rise of HD tellies came the rise of HD disc formats. And by 2006, there were two competitors fighting for supremacy. In the blue corner, there was Blu-ray. And in the red corner, HD DVD. HD DVD beat Blu-ray to market by three months, and it initially experienced greater support. But its dominance was short-lived. Blu-ray knocked out HD DVD in 2008. <laughs> A decision by Warner Brothers to stop using HD DVD, coupled with the growing popularity of Sony's PS3, which came complete with an inbuilt Blu-ray player, effectively signalled the end of the HD format war. Game over. But the PS3 had some stiff competition of its own this decade. In the mid-noughties, two computer powerhouses released their much-anticipated next-gen consoles to the world. From Sony, PlayStation 3, and from Microsoft, the Xbox 360. The 360 came first in 2005, selling a whopping 10 million units worldwide, even before the PS3 saw the light of day, almost exactly a year later. And that head start made all the difference, because as we end the decade, the 360s have outsold the PS3s, 36 million to 27 million. But it was the ultra-visceral high-def games that grabbed all the headlines, with some getting red carpet release and others selling by the boatload, as epic landmark titles like Halo 3, Gears of War and Grand Theft Auto 4 shifted a staggering 20 million copies between them. But that's not the end of our gaming story. Because a games console with a funny name came from the back of the pack to turn the gaming world on its head. I am, of course, talking about the groundbreaking Nintendo Wii. Thanks to an innovative control system and ludicrously fun games, the Wii has managed to shift an amazing 56 million units worldwide and its appeal appears to know no boundaries. I do enjoy the Wii, the games on the Wii. Not bad at tennis, actually. Rubbish at real tennis, quite good at Wii tennis. Must admit, when there's a group of people, we get that on, everybody does have a good laugh. It is good fun. One of our favourite new bits of technology this decade has been so popular and so influential that it's basically revolutionised our TV watching habits. No longer do we have to abide by TV schedules. By using a standalone box or subscription services like Virgin, BT Vision or Sky Plus, we can now choose to watch what we want, when we want. And having bought 9 million to date, it's clear as Brits love our PVRs. Sky Plus is amazing. You know, it's just like the mecca for me. Because you can just basically be the controller of your own channel and just pick all the programmes you like and watch them whenever you want. It has changed my life. I don't watch normal TV. Even if I'm watching something in the evening, I record it first so I can fast forward, fast forward through the adverts and skip out the boring bits. Now, even when you're away from home, you can catch up on TV programmes you've missed. 
All the major broadcasters now offer video on demand services, so you can hunt down anything you've missed or anything you just can't get enough of. I love this episode. And for all those dreaming of stardom, uber popular video websites like Vimeo and YouTube offer a window to the world. So just think, you could be the future of entertainment. All you need to do is think of a brilliant idea. And here's mine, a tap dancing monkey. Uh, rubbish. Over the last 10 years, tech has played a huge part in changing how we spend our spare time. And here, with the result of what you have chosen to be the Gadget Show's entertainment gadget of the decade, it's John Bentley. And this time, it was a matter of two gadgets leading the pack with the rest of the field trailing way behind them. And those two gadgets were the Nintendo Wii and the Sky Plus Box. Both in their own way, very technologically innovative, both in their own way, deserve to win. However, there can be only one gadget show entertainment gadget of the decade. And the winner is... The Nintendo oh, Wii! Well done. Well good done, decision. Nintendo. A good choice. Win for physical gaming. So, this will obviously be winging its way over to Japan, but now we have reached the pinnacle of tonight's show. Nay, the decade. Yeah, really, all the other categories so far, you know, in this show have been a builder. This is the main event. It's time to find out what you voted for as the gadget of the decade. Yes, we've seen what an incredible ten years it's been, but now it's time to find out which one gadget you think stands head and shoulders above the competition. I know what I think it is. So does he. And her. And him. But before we reveal it to you, here's what some of our friends think. My Sky Plus. Sky Plus is wonderful. It's got to be the iPod for me. The iPod. The iPod. My gadget of the decade is going to be iTunes. iTunes. It's sat nav. I could not live without sat nav. I've got the most awful sense of direction. iPhone. It has to be the iPhone. Got to be the iPhone. My little dab radio. It would be the mobile phone. The digital camera. Mine's a slender tone, because you put it round your waist, right, it's fantastic. If you put it round your head, it's even better. Like that, makes you do that. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Maybe if it was the 70s, AJ. <laughs> I'd love it to be that, but uh, <laughs> clearly it's not. In fact, uh, we're about to find out exactly what is the gadget of the decade, and for that most crucial of decisions, we now go live to that lectern just, just there. <laughs> Thank you. Right, now it's a big result, so I'd like a bit of respect from you lot, please. Uh, no interrupting, Steady. and I'd like a drum roll. I've got just the gadget for that, John. <laughs> the gadget shows gadget of the decade, as voted by our viewers, is... the Apple iPhone! <laughs> So the gadget show is gadget of the decade, as voted by you, is the Apple iPhone. I've just got to say, I think you made absolutely the right choice, so well done. <laughs> yeah, bang on. Well, that's it for tonight. And indeed, this series, we've got a little holiday over Christmas, but we'll be back soon. Yeah, don't worry, because we're back in February 2010. So How weird is that? And between now and then, we've also got loads of web TV apps uh, that you can check out on www.5.tv slash gadget show. Yeah, so have yourself a fabulous Christmas and a tech-filled New Year. And we'll see you very soon. Take see you next care. year. See Bye. You. So, the names of everyone who made the show will come up in a moment or two. But before that, here, as promised, is a quick reminder of this week's extraordinary competition. It is, in fact, the biggest competition prize fund we've ever put together, containing an incredible, mouth-watering 180 gadgets. Yes, you could win all 180 gadgets flying across your screen right now. As well as four tickets to Gadget Show Live at the NEC next Easter and a limo to ferry you to and from the show. It's a truly life-changing prize fund worth £25,500. And to win with a chance of winning it all, you'll need to know the answer to this question. How many years make up a decade? Is it A, 10, B, 20 or C, 30? To enter, call 0904 1616 or text A, B or C to 6355. Or send your answer, name and contact telephone number on the back of a postcard or sealed envelope to Gadget Show 21 PO Box 46556, London N10 WW. Calls cost £1.50 from a BT landline. Calls from other networks may vary and from mobiles will cost considerably more. Text costs £1.50 plus one message at standard network rate. For rules, go to 5.tv slash win. Lines close at midday on Tuesday the 29th of December.
December and two days later for postal entries. Goodbye and good luck.